economic miracle which is recognized by by anyone really, even the orthodox economists, um, was due to bank credit creation being mainly used for productive purposes. Um, this was done in Asia first by Japan. Japan introduced it into first, well, Manchuria, and, which is now part of China, uh, Korea and Taiwan, which were part of Japan in those days. Um, and those countries after 1945 then continued these policies because they, they saw that it's quite effective. Uh, China adopted this from 1982 when uh, Deng Xiaoping traveled in, in Japan and they explained to him how they um, had this high growth um, period. It was a system of credit guidance where the central bank uh, tells the banks um, which sector to lend to or not to lend to, so in particular it was forbidden to lend for unproductive purposes. So no consumer loans um, and also no asset loans. You could still get a mortgage, but it wouldn't be from a bank. It would be from special non-credit creating institutions. In other words, you have to use existing money for asset transactions because then you don't get the negative results of using new money creation for asset transactions. And that worked really well, 10, 15, 20% growth for, well, several decades, and these countries just um, developed tremendously quickly. Obviously, they, they didn't look at environmental concerns, so that's something you can, one can easily improve on. Um, it wasn't a goal but the same system of credit guidance can be used to achieve almost any result. As the Japanese central bank showed us, you can also use it to blow up the system um, and destroy those, uh, those, those banks and, and the traditional Japanese economy as they did in the 80s um, when the Bank of Japan used the credit guidance to force the banks to increase speculative lending. Similar to how the ECB, of course, um, encouraged the Irish banks to expand um, property lending in Ireland. So remember, I mean, some people say, well, credit guidance, that's too much of an intervention. But remember, credit is always allocated. There's always a bureaucrat making allocation decision. This is what the banks are doing. It's only at the moment nobody's ensuring or even trying to encourage them to do what could be more beneficial. And with a credit guidance system, you just make this very explicit. And obviously, it should be very transparent and accountable. Um, the alternative is to take away the power to create money from banks and give it to the government as a positive money is advocating. But I would be very cautious about that because central banks have an absolutely horrendous track record. Um, sadly, from any, after any crisis, they increase their powers and this has been true of the recent crisis, they're far too powerful and unaccountable. We should not give them any more power. The centralization of power needs to be countered. Um, this has been um, a major trend in the last century. What we need is the opposite decentralization, devolution of power, and that has to be especially true of the power to create and allocate money. So if you think about how we can do that, um, the power to create money belongs to the people, um, as we heard at the outset, um, and it needs to be returned to them. And in, in, not just on paper on, on the surface, but in reality, and this can be done in a few ways that, that I'll discuss in a minute, but it shouldn't be given to central bureaucracies. Um, I've got a bit more on the East Asian miracle. We can return perhaps if you're interested in the in the Q and A. Now, the credit guidance is, however, not the the only way to do this. In fact, if the credit guidance system is abused by the credit allocators, central ones, uh, then that's also bad. And this is the the risk with the centralization of power. And Japan is is really a great warning. Um, concerning that, the Bank of Japan abused that power from the 1980s to cause tremendous damage to the Japanese people in order to further an agenda that came from the outside to change the economic structure and you know, a, st a structural transformation, deregulation, liberalization, privatization, the whole neoliberal agenda that's being pushed by central bank. So um, there is an alternative. 
You know, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't introduce the simple credit guidance in the form of just forbidding the harmful bank credit. We could always do that. And then you don't need an active credit guidance. You just say, well, no, banks can't lend for um, consumption or asset transactions, full stop. You know, that's enough, actually, for on, on this topic of credit guidance. Um, but there's an alternative, and one should combine that. Germany was not directly 